Have you ever wondered how to include percussion in your tracks effectively? Hi, it's Simon from Composing Academy, and today I'm going to walk you through step by step how to write and orchestrate for a percussion section such as this. If you're looking to kickstart your composing journey, be sure to check out my free beginner's guide to writing cinematic music in 5 Easy Steps ebook, a link of which is in the description below. Writing effective percussion parts in your music can be a great way to help add energy, power and excitement to a track. Film, TV and video game composers will often make extensive use of various percussion instruments, particularly in music which needs to convey excitement and intensity such as action music. The percussion section can include a whole array of different types of instruments. Today I'll concentrate on percussion typically found in film, TV or video game music, excluding mallet instruments such as xylophones and glockenspiels, which I'll cover in another video. So let's start by showing a brief overview of the most common types of percussion instruments. The timpani are the oldest members of the percussion section, having been part of the orchestra for the best part of 400 years. They're a tuned percussion instrument, meaning that specific pitches can be played. Today's timpani make use of pedals, which can help to change the pitch of a drum quickly and easily, and a typical orchestra would use around four separate drums, each with a slightly different size to accommodate certain ranges. The general range of the timpani as a section is from a C2, or two Cs below middle C, which can be achieved with a large timpani, up to C4 or middle C, which can be played using a smaller diameter drum. As the timpani can play specific pitches, the instrument can be extremely useful for helping to reinforce a bass line with rhythmic accents. Remember that there are only typically four drums or notes available at one time though. These pitches can of course be changed with the pedals, but try to avoid writing passages which feature more than four pitches played in quick succession, as the player needs a little time to change the note with the pedal. Timpani are great at playing at all volumes, playing single notes as well as rolls. Timpani notation is always in the bass clef, enabling the individual pitches to be easily shown. The bass drum or grand cassa, as it's sometimes called, is one of the loudest instruments in the percussion section. With its low bass tone, it's capable of creating a huge sound, easily heard over a large orchestra. A bass drum is most effective when playing fairly sparse rhythms, such as picking out individual accents in a rhythm rather than a fast rhythm itself, and its sound can be great for providing a low end anchor to a rhythm. Within the last 20 years or so, additional drums including surdos and taiko drums have been used extensively in film music thanks partly due to composers such as Hans Zimmer making them popular in scores such as The Last Samurai or Tears of the Sun. Surdos, which originate from Brazilian samba bands, are a lower pitch drum and can be great for adding an additional layer of mid to low end energy to a percussion section. Taiko drums have been a staple of Japanese culture for hundreds of years. They come in a variety of sizes, and have different playing techniques, including single hits, rolls, and hitting the drums on the edge. A concert tom setup can typically consist of between two and four drums, all at different pitches. Toms can be great for helping to add energy and excitement to a percussion section due to their short attack sound. The snare drum is another long-standing instrument of the typical orchestral percussion section. A high-pitched drum, it features metal snares on the bottom which gives it a distinct sound. The snare drum can be played as single hits or of course as a drum roll, and can be extremely useful in providing repeating rhythms or patterns, helping to create sustained energy to a piece. The 
Cymbals can be used either as a pair, which are typically clashed together for a loud crash sound, or as a single instrument, typically described as a suspended cymbal. Pairs of crash cymbals are sometimes called piatti, and are fantastic for helping to punctuate accents in music, or signalling the start of a new musical section. Suspended cymbals are typically played with mallets, and often played as a role to help create crescendos like this. Like the cymbals, tam-tams or gongs are also made out of metal, but are usually thicker, helping to give a more fuller and rich sound. They come in various diameters, the larger the diameter, the lower the pitch. Gongs and tam-tams can be used to help accent and punctuate certain beats in the music, typically at the start of a new musical section. They can be played using mallets as single hits or rolls, or even scraped using a metal beater for particularly eerie sounds. As we've seen, the percussion section features a wide variety of instruments with different timbres and frequency ranges. To write percussion parts which have the most range and impact, try to make sure that you include elements in all parts of these ranges, low, mid and high drums, as well as metals such as cymbals. This will help to thicken the sound and will also add the intensity that the percussion section can be so good at when used properly in a track. I've got here an orchestral piece which I've written in Cubase making use of all the various percussion instruments I've outlined. I'm going to hone in on one particular section, the last half of the piece, where most of the percussion is being used in various layers. I often find composing percussion parts is one of the most fun aspects of composing. There's generally no need to worry about working out elements such as the underlying harmony or melody, and you can just have fun playing performances with the percussion samples, especially when performing them on a MIDI keyboard. Let's start by looking at the low drums, which comprise of timpani, bass drums, taiko drums, and surdos. Firstly looking at the timpani, I mostly make use of the roll technique, crescendoing it into every 8 bars or so. Using a roll like this can be a great way to add tension to a climactic section in your music. The pitch I'm using is mostly a low E, which echoes what the basses in the string section are playing. In addition to the timpani, I make extensive use of the bass drum, taikos and the surdos, helping to give a solid rhythmic grounding to the piece. The bass drum is playing on the first beat of each bar, while the surdos and taikos are playing a repeating rhythmic pattern continuously. This is providing the underlying rhythmic support. Everything else I add on top will be related to this low end rhythm. I've also added some occasional bass drum rolls just to help adding some extra variety. So when composing your low percussion parts, try to leave more space between hits than say higher drums, as lots of low drums played close together can cause a build up of low end bass frequencies which can muddy a mix. These low percussion parts can also benefit greatly from varied velocities in your sequencer or DAW. Velocities are a measurement of how fast a note is pressed. The harder the press, generally the louder the tone will be heard. By varying the velocities, it enables a much more human like performance to be heard replicating nuances in a real performance. So let's take a listen to the low end drums. Sample libraries wise, the bass drums, taikos and surdos are from Spitfire Audio's Hans Zimmer percussion library. And the timpani are also Spitfire Audio's, this time from their normal percussion library. Next it's time to add some mid range drums to the low thumping rhythm of the low end. I've separated this layer into two, the epic high toms and epic low toms. The epic high toms job is to provide a constant motion. You can see that they're playing constant eighth notes with some occasional semiquavers for variation. 
This sound is definitely on the subtle side, but its constant rhythm helps to glue the percussion section together as a whole. The second layer in this mid-range are the lower toms, which I've used in a very sparse way to help accent the two eighth note pattern I have on the third beats here. Both the high and low tom sounds are from 8DO's Epic Tom Sample Library, which is one of my all-time favourite sample libraries. So let's take a listen to this section with both the low end and mid range added together. Next we have the higher pitched drums, which in this case are the snare drums. I've introduced them 8 bars after the start of this main section, which helps add to the intensity as the piece moves along. I'm using two snare drums, one slightly higher pitched than the other, in an effort to make the drums have more impact. They're playing a simple repeating 8th note pattern, which is very similar to the high tom part, and I use 16th notes which help to transition into the new section at bar 62. This repeating pattern in the higher end helps to add further intensity as well as a new sound which can help to keep the listener's ear engaged. I also use some Tycho stick clicks to help further punctuate the sparse eighth note accents which the low toms are playing. Having high pitched percussion sounds like these stick clicks helps to further define these patterns, especially once the rest of the orchestra is added. Let's take a listen to the section with this additional element added. We've covered the low, mid and high range drums, but it's time to look at the metals used. Metals such as cymbals and tam-tams are a fantastic way to not only cover the very top end of the frequency spectrum, but can also help to make hits or accents even more dramatic. Because they can have such an impact, be careful not to overuse them, as the more frequently you write for these, the less impact they'll have each time. You can see from the piece here that I'm generally using crash cymbal and tam-tam hits or suspended cymbal swells around once every 8 bars. Suspended cymbal rolls can be great at helping to transition between sections of music, with the sharp attack of the crash cymbals or piatti helping to punctuate the actual downbeat of a new musical section. So let's listen again to the section with a final layer added. And finally, let's listen to the whole track, including the first half of the piece, which makes use of the djembe and anvil, which you haven't previously heard.
For the beginning composer, I would firstly recommend Spitfire Audio's free BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover for a good collection of orchestral percussion instruments. Project Sounds Free Orchestra also has a very nice percussion patch with a variety of basic but great sounding instruments. For the next stage up, Spitfire Audio's Originals Cinematic Percussion also offers a slightly more in-depth selection of percussion instruments for only £29. Nucleus Light by Audio Imperia is also another great option. Although it's a complete orchestral sample library, its percussion section is well stocked with all of the essential orchestral percussion sounds. It does cost $99, but as you get the whole orchestra as well as the percussion section, it's fantastic value for money. So that's a brief introduction into writing for a percussion section. Remember that to achieve most impact from your percussion, try to include the four ranges, low drums, mid drums, and high drums, and then cymbals to make maximum use of the frequency spectrum available from the section. Also, to avoid muddiness for the low end drums, try to have more space between each hit. As you work your way up the frequency range, you can then experiment with more complex rhythms on instruments such as high toms or snare drums. Symbols and other metals can then be used as key accents or at the start of new musical sections. If you found the video useful, as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more composing tutorials and tips. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below as well.